Morning, mate. You all right? Yeah, good, thanks. Where's Barry? I assume you've heard? Yes. I'm just on to Blue Arrow now, trying to sort it out. Oh, hi, Lucy. I suppose you've heard about Barry Talbot. It was round Trish's parents' house Saturday morning making a fence with his mate, Alex. Alex? Yeah, uh you met him at my birthday last year. Ah, uh, oh, yeah, join a fella. Had a big beard. Yeah, that's the one. There's no one to cover Barry's process. No one? Well, Big Paul and Fletcher are on holiday, and Mal's on paternity leave until the end of the week. Well, what are we going to do? From what Trish was saying on the phone, he was cutting some wood for the fence panels with a chop saw, and he got his hand caught in the blade. Nasty. Yeah. She said there was blood everywhere. And you could see the bone. You've got more experience on pitch one, so you're going to have to drop down onto the production line. And I'm going to have to get Kev to cover his team and yours, OK? It'll have to be. And in the meeting, tell the team there won't be any rotation either. Morning. You heard about Barry? No, what about him? He's gonna cut his hand off doing some DIY. You heard about Barry? Yeah, Jonesy told us. Lads on the production line said he might have lost the movement, touch and feeling in his right hand. Poor sod. Yeah, should have been more careful. You didn't give the chop saw enough respect. It's a dangerous piece of kit, and you need to realise that before you start messing around with them. That's a bit harsh. But completely fair. Why did his mate not showing him how to use the saw properly? I don't know. You know what Barry's like. He's pretty handy with machines, ain't he? Very clever. Shall I give you a hand unloading over here, as we're going to be sure-handed today? Yeah. Smart. I think Alex should take some responsibility. I mean, it's his work environment, his tools. Mm. He should have made sure that Barry's working safely. Oh, yeah. I mean, sometimes not saying anything is as good as pulling the trigger yourself. Yeah, I agree. Slumming it with the common folk today. Haha, <laughs> funny guy. You're going to be OK doing some real work for a change? Yeah, I'll give it a go. <gasps> hey, if he's lost the use of his hand, he's not going to be much use in production, is he? Tom was saying he's got an appointment today to see what damage he's actually done, but you're right, if he can't use it, he's screwed. Royally screwed. Hey, give us out of these parts, will you? Give us a sec. Has he got his hand caught in the saw anyway? He was wearing loose-fitting gloves and got snagged on the blade and pulled his hand in. Is he mad? Gloves around saw blades? He was trying to avoid splinters from the wood. I think that's what they call irony. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Didn't Barry's missus get made redundant a month back? Yeah, and he's not going to get pay out, is he? Because you didn't do it at work. Hard times ahead for Barry's house, then. Good, I'm sick of this. I can't wait till we're done here. Oh, you're not going to like this, then. Oh, this is ridiculous. Mike, you're just going to get on with some housekeeping, you know, get ahead of the game while the line's down. Yeah, okay, well, hurry up. It won't be down long. Oi, Simon! Two hours overtime? Are you kidding? We're short staff. I've got no choice. We're not going to hit today's targets. You're not just push the deadline back? Oh, don't be a prat. Just get back onto your station. The line will be back up in two minutes.
Line will be back up in a minute. Where's Tom? I don't know. Long time no see. Long time no anything, actually. <laughs> I've missed you. You miss me. I bet you have. How could you not? I mean, just look at me. Every man's dream, every woman's nightmare. Well, here I am. And here you are. I knew they wanted me back. I knew it. It's only a matter of time. Time is something I have plenty of, even if you don't. So don't pretend like you don't want me, like you don't find me attractive, because I know you want me, just like I want you. I've seen how you act, how you behave, and I know that deep down underneath all the bravado, the rhetoric, the pleasantries, niceties. I am what you want. I am what you crave. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm moving a bit fast for you. Perhaps we should slow it down, take it steady first. Might be hard, though, because I know that you've all thought about me at least once. Some of you have even tried to take the relationship further. You've flirted with me, teased me, tempted me. It can be a bit awkward when that happens. When you don't get to know me properly. But it gives me hope. For the future, for our future, together. After all, some of you have been quite forward with me in the past. You brushed up against me. Taken me by the hand. Kept coming back for more again and again and again. Those are the relationships that make my life worth living. I love those relationships. So intense, so emotional, so destructive. A lust for them with a burning, unquenchable desire. Others of you are a little less enthusiastic. We have our moments, but then you make your excuses and move on. Or try to. You think you can just walk away? Turn your back on me and everything will be all right. That if you try to ignore me, I'll leave you alone. Is that what you think I'll do? Is it? Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I can get a little intense. A little out of control. I guess that's where I get my nickname from, the marriage wrecker. Suits me, don't you think? Anyway, it took me a while to realize what was happening. You all living the safe life made me sick. <laughs> but I watched and I waited because I could see a glimmer of hope. I could see that you were tempted. And then you started to bend the rules. Little risk here, 
corner cut there. You thought you were protected. You thought you were untouchable. And I knew then that what we had between us wasn't over. It's just a different game we were playing. You might not be as accepting of me as you used to be. You might not say it out loud, but I know that deep down, some of you still want me. You crave me. And who am I to resist? Morning, mate. You all right? Where's Barry? Oh, poor Barry. The unwitting catalyst for my triumphant return. My knight in shining armour. He was cutting some wood for the fence panels with a chop saw, and he got his hand caught in the blade. Nasty. Barry was good, but I wanted so much more and everything was falling into place. Overconfidence. Rule breaking. But you're right, if he can't use it, he's screwed. Royally screwed. Complacency. Fear of confrontation. There's no one to cover Barry's process. Combine all of that with additional work pressures and it was all coming together to make something very special. And in the meeting, tell the team there won't be any rotation either. A couple of times I'd thought, now, this is it. But it wasn't what I was looking for. I was holding out for something better, something more permanent. I mean, it's his work environment, his tools. He should have made sure that Barry's working safely. Right. The hard Some part was safe. deciding which lucky admirer would become the object of my desires. There were so many to choose from. Eeny, meeny, miny. No, because in the end, the decision was made for me. Look at me like that. This is what I do, and I can't do it without you. We're made for each other. We're meant to be together, you and me. You see, I am the accident. Oh, it feels good to say it. I am the accident. I am the accident waiting to happen, wanting to happen. So if you ever need, I'm always here. Just a few seconds away at any given moment. Day or night, rain or shine. So go on. Do it. What have you got to lose? <laughs>